Right guys, one more video and then I'm gonna have a break. God bless you. God bless you Leeds. I have come here to warn you and tell you that time is almost up. We are living in the final moments of the end of this age. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is coming for all who have ever believed on him in the rapture. The rapture will take place any moment when the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I can't wait to leave this world. And then, after the rapture, all hell is going to break loose. All chaos and all hell is going to break loose. Sudden destruction shall come upon the world. And you don't have to be here for what is coming upon this world. If you will, wake up. Wake up and look what's happening around the world. Notice that we are living in the final moments of the end of this age. Jesus Christ really is coming. I wouldn't be standing here telling you that time is short. Jesus is coming if he wasn't. We are smack bang in the season for the return of the Lord Jesus for his people. The Lord Jesus will snatch his people up into heaven in the rapture. And then you'll find yourself left behind to face seven years called Daniel's 70th week. Called Jacob's trouble. Called the great tribulation apocalypse period. Seven years when God will pour out his wrath and his judgments upon this unbelieving, unrepenting world which has turned its back on the living God. Yet God is not far from each and every one of us according to the word of God. God is not far from each and every one of us. And if you will seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. The Bible says, well, it was Jesus actually. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Have you ever asked the Lord anything? I urge you and I compel you to ask the Lord for forgiveness because we've all sinned and we've all broken God's commandments. We all fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God, which God wants to give everyone, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For everybody that believes, no matter who you are and no matter what you've done, turn to the Lord Jesus, because he's promised that he will not turn anyone away who comes to him in truth. But if you harden your heart, if you are so proud to say, I don't need God, and your ego is getting in the way, then you're likely to end up in hell for eternity. So wake up, wake up. Jesus Christ is coming. You won't be able to say that you, won't, you, you wasn't warned. Here I am warning you and telling you that Jesus Christ is coming. And the only requirements for you to be saved and taken up to heaven when he comes is believe. That's it. One thing. One thing only. We don't, go, we don't have to go to church every Sunday. We don't have to become all religious. We just have to have some faith in our hearts and believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died in our place on that cross to take the penalty in full for our lifetime of sin. And he was buried and he rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. And if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, don't be afraid or ashamed to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Believe in your hearts that he died for you on that cross. He shed his blood for the forgiveness of all your sin on that cross. He was buried in a tomb and God raised him to life on the third day. Believe it in your heart and call upon him and you'll be saved. But Jesus said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. Repent means 
change your mind from your unbelief and believe the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For there is salvation in no other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you're not saved, you're on your road to hell. And people make jokes and they laugh about hell, but they're not laughing down there. I can assure you the people are not partying down in hell. No. They are screaming and crying and grinding their teeth in agony where the worm never dies and the fire never goes out. That's what people are doing in hell. So don't think it's a joke. Please don't think your life is a big joke. You're made in the image of God, each and every one of you. You are all individuals. Each of you is different. God is a God of variety. You are made in the image of God. And God loves you. Each of you has a God-breathed spirit inside you, an eternal spirit, an eternal soul. And depending on whether or not you accept or reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. Don't take the gamble. There's no heaven. There's no hell. Don't hesitate. One day you'll hesitate too long and you'll suddenly witness a great disappearance, vanishing of many believers, Christians, when the rapture happens, when the Lord Jesus descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. And he's going to gather up into heaven all who have ever believed on him in what's commonly referred to as the rapture. When Jesus descends and takes all believers up into heaven. And so shall we ever be with the Lord Jesus. All who have ever believed on him. And all who reject the Lord Jesus. All who hate God are going to be left behind to face the great seven year tribulation period. When God will pour out his wrath and his judgments upon this world unbelieving, unrepenting world which has turned its back on the living God turned its back on our saviour the Lord Jesus Christ believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ then you will be saved return unto the Lord your God by believing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ while you still can the gospel is that Jesus died for all our sin according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures just believe that in your heart truly know that it's true call upon Jesus and you will be saved save yourselves from this wicked sinful generation lay hold of your salvation and eternal security by believing the good news that there is indeed everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord for everybody that believes no matter who you are no matter what you have done for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved be a whosoever don't gamble with your soul don't wait until you're in hell before you realize how real it is it's a horrible place you will enter in through the gates of hell outer darkness that's what hell is and God doesn't want you to go there I don't want you to go there I don't want the worst enemy to end up in hell because it's for eternity and everybody who rejects the Lord Jesus Christ will find themselves spending their eternity in outer darkness in hell but God wants you to spend eternity in heaven with him and it's down to you it's down to you whether or not you're going to believe in your heart what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did for us on that cross 2,000 years ago. Because if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, Jesus is faithful and just and he will forgive us all our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If any man says that he has not sinned, he is calling God a liar and his word is not in him. So be humble enough to say, of course I have sinned. We've all broken God's commandments. 
If anybody says that they haven't, then they're lying. We've all broken God's commandments. The Bible says the wages of this is death. The eternal separation from God in outer darkness for eternity. But the free gift of God, which he wants to give you, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For everybody that believes, it doesn't matter what you have done, turn to the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ said, I will in no wise turn anybody away who comes to me. He's just asking for you to be true, be real, be honest, and turn to him in truth. Yes, yes, I have sinned, Lord Jesus. I, I acknowledge my sin to you, Lord Jesus. Please come into my life. Yes, I believe that you died on that cross for me, Lord Jesus. Yes, you shed your blood for the forgiveness of my sin. Yes, I believe it in my heart that you rose again from the dead. I believe this and I know this. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and you'll be saved. And you'll recognize that's the best thing that you ever did was to lay hold of your salvation and eternal security by believing the truth. Right, I think I'll, I think I'll stop now and just, and just go for a coffee, wake up a little bit more, get a caffeine shot. Um, a lot, there's a lot of Christians that hold on, actually give up coffee. I've, I've noticed quite a few Christians giving up coffee. Well, I'm I'm not going to be one of them. <laughs> no way. The only way I will give up coffee is if is 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 if um, during the Great Tribulation when there is none. <laughs> and I'm not going to be here for that. So so, <laughs> so I'm never going to give up coffee. Look, one of my stickers that I've stuck up here. Look at people, people claw at it to try and get it off <laughs> they, they, they scrape the name of Jesus off off the off the stickers that's how much this, this generation hates the Lord hates the truth they want to believe in lies instead you know aliens well if you think there are aliens coming to save you you're gonna be greatly disappointed first of all they're not aliens the demons and they've not come to save us, they've come to steal and kill and destroy. Alright? God bless you.